check on the Arabic. But anyway, brother, what I wanted to do is give you an opportunity because <clears throat> you've been praying about it and there was no pressure from me, at least I hope I didn't put any pressure on you. And <clears throat> that I had advised that if you feel led by the spirit, because you publicly have been paraded by the Dean show and others that you left Islam because you were a quote unquote pastor that was targeting Muslims and then you became a Muslim and now they've taken that clip and they've translated it and they're trying to make <clears throat> themselves famous and bring in money, revenue by saying, look, this pastor through our Dawah effort now follows on his messenger. So brother, what I want to do is first of all, you feel free to get to say what you want and what you want to keep between you and the Lord Jesus. But <clears throat> tell us about your Christian ministry, because they promoted you as a campus pastor. Talk about that a little bit. What led you to become a Muslim and why you left and why you hear that you felt like you needed to publicly testify to Christ. So he said you're a campus pastor. What did that mean? Share that with us. What was he talking about? Well, I was a campus pastor at Penn State. That's true. And I had other roles in other churches, too, as well. I was actually an assistant pastor as well in another church as well. Um, I actually had credentials, too. You know, so I was licensed and ordained. Uh, but, you know, at that time, you know, I even debated someone online. I really do. It's, there's a, on YouTube, there's actually a debate on me defending the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I won that, actually. And this is back in, like, 2008. So, like, after that, someone accepted Christ and a few other people did thereafter and stuff. So, it's like, I, I really believe this stuff. But through a on. series of... Before, so slow down a little bit for us to follow with you. So, so we can get it. 2008, you debated someone on the historicity of the resurrection, and you won the debate and provided convincing evidence that Jesus Christ was raised physically, and many people came to Christ through that. Okay, because just so people understand now, these arguments that you got for the historicity of the resurrection, did you learn them from someone? Where were you getting this stuff from? Who did you learn from? Well, I, that, well, my the main professor I was going through at the time was Dr. Gary Habermas, but he would never give me information unless I researched it first myself. He would only help me optimally if I was totally, totally stuck. So I had to research all this on my own. And wow. so, so if I was actually stuck, then you'd help me out. So you have one of the heaviest hitters, one of the leading scholars on the historicity of the resurrection, Shroud of Turn and near-death experiences. People may not know. Gary Habermas is one of the leading evangelical scholars on the evidence for the resurrection, on the Shroud of Turin, and near-death experiences. And you had him as a coach. Okay, continue, brother. And you know what? In a weird way, that actually helped me down the line, you know, because I have really studied the authenticity of the scriptures. You know, the, the New Testament has different families. You have the Alexandrian family, you have the Byzantine family, and, and a couple other families. So you can always see the, what structure that these copies were made and stuff, and that the evidence of the resurrection is true. And that always kind of stuck with me. So even in the Islamic journey I had, I still believed that Jesus Christ was alive. That always did. Because like the, the, the whole preaching started in Jerusalem. If you make up a lie, you don't do it in Jerusalem. The women are the primary witnesses. Women back then were not believable. You know, so if you're going to make up a lie, why would you use the women? Like stuff like that. And so anyway, there are a series of bad decisions I made in life. It's like, I, I'm, I'm basically the result of just, um, I'm wasted talent. That, that's, I'm just being honest, Sam you're and everyone watching. Brother, you're not wasted talent because if you died in sin, then it would be a waste of talent. You still have breath in your lungs. You're alive. The Lord of Jesus is restoring you. And God is the God of the second chance. And that's why he's the God of redemption, a redeemer. He redeems and he transforms. So don't be harsh on yourself because that's a satanic ploy to try to get you feeling so shameful, shameless, and guilty so that you won't be used to the Lord. Don't worry about that. You're back. You're still breathing, and now you can undo the damage because you've returned home to the true Lord and Savior. Now, what brought you into Islam? Tell us about that. Well, that's kind of it. You're talking about redemption. So, like, I made so many horrible mistakes. You have no idea that I just really felt like maybe I'm on the wrong, wrong path. You know, like, all these Bible people... They pass all these tests. I don't. That's the difference. Job stayed faithful in extreme adversity. I did not. So, like, I ended up trying to wonder, man, am I on the wrong path? Is Christianity right? And so, am I really forgiven? 
And so these were the questions that were coming up, and it really made me question Christianity. And then, you know, I kind of saw how the Muslims were over the years. I've always gotten along very, very, very well with them. I really did. And with the Christians, I always had trouble. So it's kind of like, man, you know, like Jesus says, you know, my people for the love they have for one another. So I'm like, wait a minute, you know, and then one thing led to another. And then I started looking at the plural Elohim. And then Sam, you corrected me on this, but I thought there was a royal plural. So I started kind of rejecting the Trinity. And then that led to another thing. And then I ended up really exploring Islam. Long story short, uh, Hamza Yusuf from Zaytuna College, he actually called me back in March. And he did the Shahada with me. He actually took the time to go call me. And uh, Islam was a very enchanting religion. I'm not going to deny it. I got along very well with all the Muslims. The yeah, master that I was attending. On. Yeah, before you move on, people, again, they, they got to understand who led you to make Shahada. Hamza Yusuf, for you guys who don't know, I've addressed him on previous sessions. Hamza Yusuf is probably the most celebrated North American convert to Islam and scholar. He and his friend, Imam Zayed Shakir, started the first Muslim college in America in Berkeley, California, called the Zaytuna Institute. So he's considered world-renowned scholar, but the Salafis don't like him. Because he's a Sufi. Remember what Ahmed X Muslim said? He goes, he grew, was raised in a Sufi family, but he became Salafi. <clears throat> Hamza Yusuf is more of a Sufi. He believes in tasawwuf, tawassul, all these things that Salafis condemn. But Hamza Yusuf called him. It's like, what, what, uh, what, who, who could I give as an example in Christianity? Well, it's hard. Uh, who would be akin to Hamza Yusuf? Calling you, if like a uh, light of Christian, I can't say Billy Graham, he wouldn't be on the level of Billy Graham. The Billy Graham of Islam would have been Ahmad Didat, but anyway, big name. So he called you and he led you into Shahada, yes, sir. All right, and so then yep. what happened? You took Shahada, and then the, so emphasize that you're seeing a love and unity among Muslims that you didn't see among Christians. That that's what made you think maybe they're the ones who are following Jesus, right. Yeah, at the time, actually, in the conversation that I had, this is back in March, you know, um, Hamza Yusuf told me that the agape, the way he worded it was the agape love amongst the Muslims is much greater than that amongst the Christians. Who worded it that way? And so Hamza Yusuf did. Did you guys hear that? Hamza Yusuf stealing Christian vocabulary, Christian theology, Christian, Christian terminology, and he says agape, which is a New Testament term. The agape love among Muslims is greater among the Christians, which he's full of it because the Muslims, like he was just telling you, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, Al Al-Qaeda were killing more Muslims than non-Muslims because they didn't deem them to be Muslims. So he's full of it. But anyway, go ahead. So like, nonetheless, I was pretty hardcore about it. So I started doing Dawa and I started debating Christians and stuff, especially more so online or at my job site. So, you know, I was kind of winning that though. And it's in all reality, I was capitalizing on people's ignorance. That's what it was. So, so you were winning it, debates against Christians when you became a Muslim? Yes, sir. So yep. what kind of, because remember, you were trained and taught by one of the leading experts on the resurrection, which you still affirmed that Jesus was a taken to heaven, even as a Muslim, you told me, because you interpreted 4157 the Quran in a unique manner. But just so people understand, you were also taught on the evidence for the Trinity. But now you're telling me you became a Muslim and now you're attacking Christians and winning debates against them and showing them that there is no Trinity. How'd you do that? It's easy. You just tell them that's the royal plural. Anytime that Jesus talks about, say, John, you just say, well, that's just Christian development. You just erase Paul, you know, and that's it. And a lot of them are like, get spun up in this. And the stupid thing is, Sam, is that when you, when you, were, you and I were talking that day, you know, I was using John, right? And you're saying, well, if you're going to use John, you got to use the rest of John. You can't, you can't cherry pick. So that's what I was doing. If, if one person said that, they would have won, but no one did. And then people would always say to me things like, well, we believe in Jesus, like Christians. I say, well, I believe in Jesus too. The difference is I actually follow him. Did Jesus Christ die for you to have a ham sandwich or for your sins? So that's what I would say. And like, and it was pretty hard for. And this and is it, why it's, it's, it really sucked. And the Christians got rocked because they didn't know their faith any better. So, guys, uh, one one exhortation. 
there are people who profess to be Christians who don't know their faith, and he capitalized on that, and he was winning. We need to know our faith, not to win arguments, know our faith, to be assured that we have the truth and Jesus is Lord and that everything else that contradicts the message of our Lord is from the pit of hell. But go ahead, Kim, continue. So, like, nonetheless, I didn't want to, um, I don't go with the philosophical arguments. Sometimes, a lot of times, Muslims will say, well, the Trinity doesn't make sense or whatever. I just went straight to the scriptures. I would say, where does Jesus say, I am God? And a lot of the Christians I talked to couldn't. They always resort to, like, John and the I am statements, if anything. And I'm like, well, no, 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 don't go there. Show me in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and show me in the red letters. Not what Matthew says about Jesus, but what Jesus says. And so that's kind of how I was doing it. It's really shameful. I'm being honest with you. I did a lot of damage. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, may you now, one thing is, don't be emotionally unstable anymore. Be stable by yielding to the Spirit, be in the presence of the Spirit. That means you're going to have to pray a lot more, fast a lot more, study Scripture, and be in community. you got to be in a solid community. You can't be alone anymore. You can't be a lone wolf ranger, and God will strengthen you. But now we want to know, because even then you still struggled between, you vacillated between Christianity and Islam, because as you said, and I want people to hear this, because he already had a strong foundation in, let's say, the resurrection, and he knew that the resurrection was historical. That foundation did not leave him. It stayed planted in his DNA, in his inner person. And so you're having struggles between Islam and Christianity. So how did you slowly exit out of Islam? What happened? How did you come back to Christianity? Well, the first hit I got was uh, I met a missionary. So this missionary, he, he ministers to Jewish people and stuff. So he was, he was talking about uh, Daniel chapter 7, how the Son of Man will come in the clouds and that we will serve him. And the Hebrew word he pointed out was the word palel. And the word palel, yeah, it means serve, yeah, but it's a type of Hebrew word that you can look it up in a brown driver Briggs. You can only apply it to a deity, not to a human. So I, can, I cannot palel you, Sam. I can only palel God. So when I saw that, I'm like, wait a minute, that's, that's like Jesus. And that was always in the back of my mind. I, I just couldn't get that out. And then just for the time order of things, the Dean Show actually interviewed me first. And then they put that, that minute-long clip on, the short clip. And then after that, that's when I met this missionary. Okay, now let people see their tactics. Guys, the Dean Show had interviewed him before. Then they took that short clip where he was in the mosque and Eddie met him. And then they decided to post it later, obviously, because Eddie is trying to raise, and I think he's already raised, over $300,000 because he started the first Islamic Dawa Center, and it's in Florida. So it is perfect timing that he took the clip of this man and tried to sell his product. So repeat that again. What happened? This clip that came on that I saw, he had already interviewed you before that? Yeah, you commented on the five-minute video, but in actuality, it was all filmed back in September. And so, so he that night— it in September. Yes, sir. And I saw it in December? Yeah, the, the five-minute five one. Minutes. But the, the original interview, how long yep. was it? Well, the original clip was back in September. And it's just like 59 seconds. Okay. And then they reposted it. Okay, so then when, so when he interviewed you first, then you met the missionary? Or after he put it again on December, you met the missionary? So give us the timeline. So September I interviewed you. When do you meet this missionary in Daniel 7? So we can follow the timeline. Yeah, it's just really weird because it's, it's the Lord. You're going to see the God on this. So, like, Eddie interviews me first. And I really like Eddie. I want to let you know. He was very no, friendly to me. I got to be honest. I met Eddie. He's one of the nicest, sweetest human beings I've met. I'm being honest. I met him face to face. He is I, – I don't, I don't think he's faking it. I just think his personality is such. He's a sweet human being, and I attribute that to his jiu-jitsu training, not Islam. People don't know that Eddie's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Brazilian, Gracie jiu-jitsu. He's certified. He has a school. I think the discipline and the ethics that he learned from jiu-jitsu made him humble, not Islam. But go ahead. So, like, nonetheless, he interviews me. I end up on that 59-second clip. I'm making a lot more Muslim friends now. I mean, I was already well-connected, though, before all this. But nonetheless, whatever. But anyway, he interviews me. And then, like, a week after that, I met that missionary. It was a week so later. He in September. So I'm going to follow the chronology. Guys, help, work with me. September, he gets that short clip where Eddie interviews him in the mosque. 
Then a week later, this missionary hits him with Daniel 7, where the Son of Man is receiving the worship given to God alone. All right, that's in September. So then what happens? Right. And so, like, from there, you know, I was looking at some of the comments on that short clip. You know, you can probably see my old screen name and me debating some people on occasion. But, like, whatever. But anyway, like, one of the guys said something about the clip, and he referenced to a Christian prince. I never heard of Christian prince. So he left this link. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I click on it. And so I'm now kind of refuting this guy who's relying on Christian Prince. But I, I'll be honest, I kind of like Christian Prince. He was kind of cool. So I decided to go watch him again. So like, I like how he puts a smack down on people. I'm going to be honest, you know? <laughs> you know, rightfully so. If you go on his show, you got to show respect. That's just the way it is. So I'm watching him and stuff. And then like out of the blue, he's talking about Sir 931. This is my second hit I had. So I had the Palel hit in uh, da uh, Daniel 7, 14. And then, like, now I'm watching Chris Christian Prince, and he's going off on Surah 9, Ayat 31, where in the middle of the verse, you know, it's talking about, you will, paraphrasing here, you will not worship, you know, idols or the rabbis. And then it says, Duhi, Allahi, Wah, Masiha. And so it means, like, you shall not worship, you shall only, you only worship Allah, Allahi, Wa, and Masiha, the Messiah. So it's like worship Allah and the Messiah, seriously, in the Quran? And I, I, I could not get that back out. And I've had other Arabs tell me in the past, oh, no, 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 that's not it. This is not Latin. You know, word order, is, word order is actually important in Arabic. I'm not an expert in Arabic, but I know that I, enough to sense to see this. Let me explain so, what the argument is. Let me help them because a lot of people may not know the verse. And I'll get you guys the article I wrote on this. In chapter 9, verse 31. Anyone who reads Arabic who's not a Muslim will honestly tell you. Like if I bring Ahmed, ex-Muslim will confirm it. In chapter 9, verse 31, it says, And they took their rabbis and monks as lords besides Allah and the Messiah, Son of Mary. That's the literal translation, meaning if you read the verse in Arabic, it is condemning Jews and Christians for taking rabbis and, lord, uh, rabbis and monks as lords when they're supposed to only take Allah and the Messiah, son of Mary, as their Lord. That's what the Arabic literally says. Allah and the Messiah are the only Lord you're supposed to take. And so when he heard Christian Prince bring that up, that rocked him. So then what happened? Yeah, that kind of did. That really did, actually. So I now I have the two verses I'm telling you about, Daniel 7, 14. And now I got that, sir, to deal with. But I'm still not, like, over the line yet. You know, so I'm still fighting it. And then, like... You know, now I, I start exploring, you know, the alternative, you know, versions of the resurrection, you know, Sir 4, 157, you know, they, they, their interpretation of that passage is that, you know, Jesus was never crucified. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? And so, like, to me, you know, in reference to Almadia 5, 157, it outright tells you in the Arabic that Jesus dies. And some Muslims actually believe that. But usually they say he dies in the second coming, which I don't get that. Because if he already ascended, you know he's got a different body. So I figured, well, he died on the cross. I don't see any harm in that. You know, he's just saying he's just a prophet. You know, he can die on a cross, sure. You know, that's kind of how I was rationalizing it here. You know, you got to understand it's whacked out. And in yeah, the spiritual warfare. Let me let me elaborate on this, brother, because I want people to feel it. You see, the foundation was laid. Understand what happened to him. Because he had Gary Habermas instructing him, he knew the overwhelming evidence that Jesus was killed by crucifixion. That's one indisputable fact. He knew it. That stayed with him. So when he comes to the Quran and he says, they neither killed nor crucified him, he knew one established historical fact was Jesus was killed by crucifixion. So this verse cannot mean that Jesus wasn't killed and raised. So he tried to then explain it away to agree with what he knew to be a fact. But the Muslims were giving him a hard time saying, no, that's not the case, right? Yeah, that's correct. So, so like, <laughs> so uh, this one master that I was going to, you know, I was talking to a Christian actually over there about this passage. And so I, I told him that, yeah, you can still believe in the, the death and resurrection of Christ. We just don't believe, we just don't believe that, like, he's God, you know? And so he's like, well, I can do Islam like that, you know, he said. So I'm sharing this now with the sheep. And then... <laughs> They didn't like it. <laughs> and so they gave me um, a couple books about this, you know. And uh, I'm trying, I'm sorry, Sam, I can't remember the name of the book right now. Um, but you whatever. Anyway, the, the, he was on the Dean Show, was too. Gerald Dirks? Gerald Dirks, right? Yeah, it was Dirks. Yeah, you bet. It was Dirks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was it. Yep.
Yep, the that was it. Former Bible Methodist Bible. pastor. Yeah. Gerald F. Dirks, for you, those of you who don't know, was a Harvard graduate. He got a degree in psychology. He was a United Methodist deacon who became a Muslim and wrote some books on trying to attract Christians to Islam and why the Bible is not reliable. So they gave him books by Gerald Dirks. Go ahead. So like their alternative theories are things like it's, you know, Ger Gerald Dirks really asserts that it was Barabbas and he argues that Barabbas means son of the father and he was the one who was put on the cross while Yeshua ben Joseph was not. So I'm like, how can you, Jesus is all bloody. How can you get him confused for someone else, you know, or whatever? And it, it's like, there's all these transference theories and stuff and it's so complicated. It's just crazy. And he, you know, even all the scholars, even atheist scholars, believe that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. So I'm like, I just couldn't get past that. But anyway, whatever. So I'm still pressing Islam. And then they put my the, the, uh, the same video uh, clip back in September, and they put that on for five minutes now. And I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, okay, oh, so oh, now oh, I go. Wait, what? You're saying it was a 59-second clip. Now they made it five minutes? They extended it? Yeah. They gave you the know, extended version? Because originally you said in September it's 59 seconds, and now they put on the extended five-minute version in December? Oh, wow. Go ahead, yes. Yes, sir. So, but now I really had to really make up my mind hardcore because now I'm having these questions about Islam, but at the same time, I'm being offered to join the leadership and so and, and move down there. And so I was kind of like, I was really... Position. Brad, I love your testimony. Not because really I love question, but they, said, they said, come on down here and join us. You know, be part so of the team. They, 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 an invitation to join their dawah team because they wanted you to do dawah to the non-muslims wow so now you're in a battle so then what happens it's a spiritual battle that's all i can say listen guys when it when it talks about your battles not against flesh and blood a lot of times over the years a lot of people will say well you know your boss gave you a hard time it, it's, it's it's really demons or something like that you know that's not true no i'm telling you if you're in a, if you're dark and you're in, you're in a lost place man i'm telling you the spiritual warfare is beyond what you can imagine Please understand that. It's beyond what you can imagine. I don't wish it on a soul. I don't wish it on my worst enemies. I'm just letting you know there's a real spiritual war. You guys better pray if you want to reach anyone. I mean it, anyone. So anyway, at that time, that video came out, and I'm like, well, God, you know, I'll tell you what, God, and I just prayed so hard. And I'll tell you, even in practicing Islam, God was answering my prayers. You have no idea. He really was. I'm telling you, proof is there, and they answer prayers. But you can't just base it on that. you got to base it on truth. So let me at explain, that point, let me I explain said, that. before you move on, let me explain what he said. He's saying when he was praying to Allah, his prayers are answered. You know why? Let me explain to you. Jesus, who's humble and compassionate and patient, was he was answering your prayers because he was going to bring you back. So when you ask Allah something and you got an answer, that was Jesus working beyond the scenes because he knew he was going to bring you to this point to confront you and bring you back to his feet. So it wasn't Allah, it was Jesus who was waiting patiently and saying, okay, enough is enough. How long are you going to run? Because you cannot run me. I run faster than you. And I come to seek and save that which is lost. So then, as you're praying, then what happened? Well, anyway, I just prayed specifically that one of the, the major apologists that's online would go and get in touch with me or comment on that video or something. Just one of the major apologists. I actually tried so to reach out to... a. Christian Prince, no joke. I actually, I actually called him. It's on my phone record. Seriously, and um, brother, I oh, no, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just, because this is exciting. I want you to the brothers excited. Wait, so you when he put up that five minute video, then you prayed specifically. Let one of the Christian apologists to watch the video and comment on it. And you're hoping maybe Christian Prince and you wanted to get in contact with him, right? Could you repeat that apart again, and then continue? Because I want him to catch it. Yes, sir. I, I actually called Christian Prince, no joke, you know, so I really did. It's like, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, you can't, whatever. But anyway, I have, I, I called Rob Christian. I called Christian Prince. They never answered. So I'm like, well, God, gee, I tell you what, you got to get someone to answer it. You know, it could be Christian Prince. It could be Rob Christian. It could be Al Fadi. It could be you, Sam. It could be David Wood. Someone, just someone cool. You know, I need someone to go answer this. And, and if I figured this, if I can do decent against one of these guys, I was going to stay in Islam. That was it. I was going to go there and give them everything I got in the kitchen sink. And if these guys can't take it, then that's it. I'm staying in Islam. That was it. That was my deal. So on, on that five-minute clip, one of my friends pointed something out to me. And they're like, oh, man, there's all these Christians commenting on it. And I'm like, in the comments, there's like a high influx of Christians. So I'm like, great. Now some, some Christian, it's on some sort of Christian website. And then I, I, I 
found your your uh, four minute commentary that no your four hour commentary that you did on me and listen guys this is to all the muslims out there during that whole entire video sam was saying look at this idiot look at this clown it's a new level of stupid but you know what you got to humble yourself to a point for some truth you know if he's going to call you that give it to him you know go call him you know be a man you know or be a grown woman you know you got you got to go out and confront these people don't be in the the back seats and be like well he should have said this or should have done that take your tawheed and if you really believe in the fear of allah why don't you go against these guys in person they live stream them man go call on their their little link you got to get on here don't even tell them you're going to go on just do it you know don't be criticizing me unless you got the guts to do it i'll tell you what i had the guts to do it you better prove it so anyway like nonetheless i say i'm uh, few days later after that you were um you doing this trinity thing like anyone who's challenged me in the trinity go ahead and call so i did i called you and like you recognized me so it was it was neat and uh i i gave you everything i got sam i really did and and, and some of the things that you really hit on me was like I, I was talking about for example uh zachariah 12 10 and i asked you is this symbolic or is this literal and you're like well you gotta look at zachariah 13 7 and so over there, the word associate, the Hebrew word for that you pointed out was amith, which means that like, you're a kinship. So that shows that Yahweh has an associate, and we know that would be Jesus in the New Testament. So that was pretty convincing. I'm not going to deny that. That was pretty solid. I didn't just, I checked it first. I didn't believe it at first, but I had to check this. And then the other thing, too, is that I, was, I brought to you about the royal plural. You said to me there in that conversation, no, no, no. The royal plural, both in Arabic and in Hebrew, was a 1400s invention. Original Hebrew does not have that. You're right, because King David is a malek, not a malekem. He's not a royal plural. So I checked that later on. You're right about that, too. And then I said, well, James is like the earliest book. You know, it's the most pure form of Christianity. He never says that Jesus is God. Well, that's not true either. Because uh, James calls Jesus Christ the Lord, you know, in verse 1, 1, and in chapter 2, verse 1. There's only one Lord, and that's Allah. And then now James is saying there's only one Lord, and that's Jesus. Jesus Christ. James is calling Jesus Christ. I got my finger in there, okay? Jesus Christ. Look at my finger. Jesus Christ. And so that's what James says. And then you brought up some other points in Matthew. And then even Matthew says he's God. Like yesterday, for example, in your teaching, you're talking about like Matthew 25, you know, where Jesus Christ is judging. He's judging people. You know, I got four, Sura one, Maliki Yami Dean, Master of the Day of Judgment. Well, right there in the Gospels, you have Jesus Christ, and he's the Master of the Day of Judgment. That's right. So that's the point. So, right in the red letters, and the only argument other Muslims can say, oh, the Bible's corrupt, it's corrupt. But the crazy thing is, the Quran actually confirms the Bible over and over and over and over again so anyway there's a few other things that Sam brought up he just totally annihilated me I, I lost reception on my phone I called him back and I told him you won but I was gonna still check it Acts yep. 17 be a good Berean right yep I so anyway I checked it and um, Sam yeah at that point I, I just I, you know you you got in touch with me on Skype we talked later that night yep. and I told you I accepted Jesus Christ as God, Lord, Savior, I believe in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, we in Islam, they'll say, Bismi, Allah. But when they say, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, that's calling them God. When you just say, in the name of, that means you're calling them God. That's we. You don't say, like, Bismi, you know, Holy Spirit. Because if you say, in the name of the Holy Spirit, you're calling the Holy Spirit God. So right there in that formulation in the, in the New Testament, in the red letters, Jesus is affirming himself to be God right there, too. So that's basically yeah. it, you know, for how it came back to uh, Christianity. Let me, just comment. Let me just comment. I didn't bring him on, and he knows this because we talk behind the scenes, to tell you how God used me. That will, Never. That's not my intention. May God always purge my motives, destroy my pride, that I never, never use people to advance my own ministry. May God purge me of that. I do it for the glory of Jesus Christ. I wanted to come because... I told them, when God puts in your heart, you publicly deny Jesus because you're on all these Muslim channels. Then you have to now publicly confess Jesus Christ as Lord. But I want you to catch the miracle again. Watch the miracle. God can use anyone. It is an honor the Lord will use me. He used Christian Prince. He, used, he uses us all. 
May the Lord Jesus be glorified in our lives. He increase and we decrease and destroy our pride. It's not about envy or competition, but he prayed a specific prayer. I want you to hear that prayer. God, because he, wa he was vac vacillating. He's like, have one of these Christian apologists watch that five-minute clip and respond. And then debating that person, if I win, I'll stay a Muslim. Now, God knows if I'm lying or not. I haven't addressed Eddie or his shows in over a year. If I remember correctly, I haven't touched Eddie stuff because the people he brings in, their jokes. They don't know Christianity. I'm not lying to you. For some reason, this clip showed up. God is listening if I'm lying. And I'm saying, hmm, pastor. I listened to it. And then when, when I heard it, I go, you know what? I got to respond to this guy. So unbeknownst to me, God is answering his prayer by having me find the clip and put in my heart to answer it. I didn't know that. And then in the middle of the stream, I see his face. He calls me. He's on, it was on StreamYard. And I'm like, man, this guy is familiar. I'm looking at him. I go, hey, you're the guy in the Dean show. See how God Almighty behind the scenes moved me to comment on that. And unbeknownst to me, that was his prayer. That's because Jesus did not give up on you. Jesus is saying, you thought you were running from me, but I was running after you. And I was going to put you in a situation. You have no excuse not to believe I am Lord and Muhammad is dead. And then what you do with that choice is between you and the Lord. So now that you've shared your story, and now that the Muslims are taking that clip and some channels are translating it, what do you want to say in front of the whole world? Because people are going to hear about this. I even tagged the Dean Show. They're going to hear about this. What do you want to say to those unfortunate, there were some people that you led to Islam and those Christians that you troubled and caused them to doubt. What do you want to say to the world now about your stint in Islam and now your faith in Jesus Christ? You have the floor. Wow. That's heavy. Like, the light that you, you experience is real, man. You know, it's like when you're in darkness for a long time, you don't know it. You think it's light, but it's just, it's an illusion. You know, and now that, you know, I, I, I'm back with Jesus again, man, it's bright. It, it's, it's so awesome. It's lovely. <laughs> it really is. And it's just, I'm just in awe that he forgives me. You know, I'm just grateful. You know, I really am. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry for what I've done to all the Christians and to the body of Christ, too. I really am. But I know God's forgiveness is just over so deep, you know, and I'm just so grateful for that. It's not just a mental game, like I said. It's a real spiritual war. you got to pray for these people, guys. And then, like, you know, someone is like, Paul, don't be using Paul as your main argument, you know? Go to other things they may respect. If they say, well, I'll go with Matthew, use Matthew, you know? Kind of use some sense. And, you know, and and, it, uh, and as far as the Christianity, you know what? Something Sam told me that night, when, you know, after I accepted Jesus. He says that, and this is to the Christians that are the real deal. Because I know that we're in a corrupt church. I know that. One third of all pastors are watching porn. You know, the average prayer life corner Barna research is that pastors pray just 12 minutes a day. Oh my God, I'm and I know that church is not Shangri-La. I know that. It's not heaven on earth. But man, we, we got to amp it up. You know, we have to live holy. I'm sorry. That's for all Christians, not just yeah, pastors. Same. We all have to live holy. That's the command. If you don't do that, Man, for real, like read 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 and ask yourself, am I living in these sins? Because they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so we have to make sure we be cognizant of that and really repent. But don't let, but to, like back to what I was trying to say. So you guys who are really trying to follow Jesus wholeheartedly, Jesus is your rock, not the people. Don't get discouraged by the people. I mean, you have to find a body. I get it. You know, I know there's no such thing as a perfect church. And the ones who cry that the most, there's no such thing as a perfect church, are the ones who are ruining it. You know, so. Just find a decent fellowship, one where they preach Jesus Christ as God, Lord resurrected, and they don't talk about themselves all day long. Yeah. And they, you can actually be honest with these people, and they won't try to crucify you. I mean, I go through enough regret as it is. I don't need other people to crucify me. I can crucify myself fine every day. I do. But I don't need to be doing that. So it's the bottom line is, guys, you know, just for those of you who just try to do it, just keep seeking Jesus Christ. Keep going all the way. You know, it's in the Old Testament. Muslims, it's in the Old Testament. You know, that, that plural, we and us in the Quran, it's not a, a royal plural. Look it up in the Arabic. It's not. And same with, with the Hebrew. That royal plural is made up. That's just from the pit of hell. 
That's something that really was invented in medieval times. And just think about it. I mean, for real, this is your salvation. Don't worry about your friends think, you know, I, I know that's a lot of people that you feel that you could support, you know, and, and even for people like Andrew Tate, I, I'm kind of concerned for him too. I mean, he left a rich Orthodox faith, you know, and, and now he's going to be going to some other people that are eventually might be taking advantage of him. You know, he's going to feel like they care about him, but in the end, the Christians are always going to be the one that'll back him up. If he stays with them. And so, you know, he, but you can't flirt with Christianity either. You can't criticize Christians unless you actually live it. I live it. You know, I actually meet the requirements of First Timothy chapter 3. I am a Proverbs 31 man. So I feel I have the right to criticize. I wasn't partying or anything like that in this whole thing. I've always lived let me, right. Let me, let me explain what you mean by that, guys. He's not trying to speak in arrogance, meaning that when he did believe in Christ, he tried his best not to fornicate, no sex before marriage, no getting drunk or getting high. And he's saying that not, he's saying, oh, look, no, because he told you he fell and he feels guilty because people don't understand the background when you say this. Is it not true that sadly in the circles that you engaged, you met pastors and people in ministry who are all about money, all about sex and using Christianity as a disguise and you saw it with your own eyes and that's what disgusted you? Yeah, there's this one group that I was kind of involved with. I was their administrator. You know, and it was just so crazy. That's all I got to say. It, it was a ministry to help out people who are addicted to drugs and stuff. And like eight people who have been in that program have died afterwards. One of the guys that died, they told him, well, it's not biblical to be in uh, psychotic medication. He got off his medication. He got shot by the police 18 times. You know, he took a knife out after them. And then to make matters worse, that family was so much grief that they gave his landscaping equipment to one of the other pastors. And now to this day, he takes that guy's... Uh, name and equipment and calls it his own business it's all because he told him to go get off that medication that's why he got it that's sleazy you know so you got a lot of people out there that are going to be saying that they're this or that but like jesus says you know my people buy their fruit you know neither you know it's just it lord, lord do you not prophesy in your name cast out demons in your name you know yep. depart from me he says you practice anomia no law and i used to use that verse when i was practicing islam it's like you don't practice the law anyway and so it's like, but Jesus Christ is saying that you have to have right orthodoxy, you have to have the right beliefs, and you have to have the right orthopraxis, the right practice to match it up. Because if you really believe that Jesus is God, you're going to do what he says. Amen. Amen. Now, brother, with that said, as you shared your journey, you still have a long, a long way to go to get planted again by the Holy Spirit, healing you, getting emotionally stable, being in good, solid community of true believers. They're there. Christ will not abandon his church, and they're true believers in all all over the world, born of the Spirit, who really love the Lord. So you got to meet them, hook up with them. But now, since you had taken Shada, that you said there is no God, but Allah is a messenger. Do you now acknowledge with your own mouth, Muhammad is a false prophet and antichrist? Yeah, totally. Like Muhammad is a false prophet because Jesus says, like, all right, there'll be, well, my bad, is Paul. He says, if anyone preaches a different gospel, you know, than what we're preaching, even an angel, you are to reject it. And the, the, one of the main verses I used to use was Sir, I'm not, not Sir, I'm sorry, it's Isaiah 42. I used to say that was Muhammad. No, Isaiah 42, 4, it talks about the coastlands and it's about the servant. And the servant is about Jesus. And it says that the servant is going to have his new law. That's the New Testament. That's a huge deal. That's what it's referring to. It's not referring to some way future guy. It says in Isaiah that the servant's part of the line of Jesse, according to the book of Ruth. Muhammad is not from Jesse. You know, it goes Jesse, then and then David. That's who it goes to. Muhammad's not part of that. So Mu Muhammad, that's not even his real name. You don't even know his real name. That's a, that's a title, the, the praise one. So it, it's like you don't know Muhammad's real name. How can you follow someone if you don't know his real name? And then it's like all the mosques are facing Petra Jordan for the first hundred years. And then they're all facing Mecca after the Civil War with the Umayyad Empire. You guys have to see that. You know, stay with the Old Testament. Does the Old Testament match to the New? There is amazing congruity. Amazing. And you just, just stick with one of these apologists. Watch them. They have articles. If you think they're so wrong, take their articles. And then, like, just go and, like, tell them where they're wrong. Good luck. You know? Yep. Good luck. So everyone heard, glory to Jesus Christ. Glory May your zeal become Christ. stronger and stronger. And you be sealed by the Spirit. And I pray that for all of us. We walk worthy of the Lord and save me from my own vices. And I hate my flesh. Because it's a struggle. We're not perfect. We're being perfected. You do acknowledge Muhammad is a false prophet and an antichrist. 
Yes, sir. I have to because either Jesus Christ is God or he's not. So Muhammad, he's trying to take you away from Jesus Christ. Jesus says that he is God. He says he raised from the dead. The two keys to salvation is what the teachings of Muhammad did. He's trying to get you away from the physical resurrection of Christ and away from the lordship of Jesus. Like I said earlier, Matthew 25, the red letters, Jesus Christ is judging. You know, Maliki Yami Dean, right? So that means that Jesus is the judge. Look at it like that. Not that I'm saying the Quran is inspired. It's not. The, the Quran is not inspired, but I'm just using that as a tool to help other Muslims. I want to make that clear. So I want the Dean Show to hear this. I hope someone brings this to the attention, Dean Show. Dean Show, you heard. Remove this clip. The man acknowledges Muhammad is an antichrist, a false prophet, not sent by the true God, and your Quran is not of God. And he just told you Jesus is God who died and rose again. He was crucified. And you believe Jesus will return physically and bodily to judge the living dead because that's what Matthew 25 is all about, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I believe in the, that Jesus Christ is physically alive. He's going to physically come back. He's going to physically judge the world like it says. You know, that, that's it. You know, it's like Jesus Christ is God resurrected physically going to come back he's going to create the new heaven new earth and it says in the revelation that we will actually be, able to be in the presence of god himself you know he will be the light of the new heaven new earth in revelation 22 glory to god so you do bear witness the one true god is the father the son holy spirit <laughs> that's like a, like a shahada in a sense a declaration yes i do so i do bear witness that god yahweh elohim is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, co-equal God, co-eternal past, co-eternal future, in charge, but yet one. Amen. And you do bear witness. So I believe in the Jesus, Trinity, in other words, yes. Amen. And you do bear witness that Jesus is your Lord who died for you and rose again. Yes, sir. Like it says in Romans 10, 9, confessing the mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He's my resurrected Savior. He's God who raised from the dead. He said, I will Amen. raise this temple in three days. He pointed to himself. He raised Amen. himself. Amen. Brother, you have publicly acknowledged and confessed your love for the triune God and your love that <clears throat> love for Jesus. And you just confess. Everyone heard it. Jesus is my Lord because you had to confess publicly. And that you <clears throat> have repented and you're sorrowful for what you did. And you trust that he's forgiven you. And now you're going to live for him as your Lord until he summons you, until he returns. That's it. You've done your part. Now, you're a new creation. Look forward. Do not look back. When you're plowing, you look ahead to the field, not behind you. The cross before you, the world behind you. No turning back. No turning back. So now move forward. So our advice is we'll pray for you. You have a community. But get planted in a solid church. And you know where the Lord is leading you. That's your journey. You don't need to give too much information to people. Get planted solid church. Meet solid people who love Jesus. Pray a lot more. And I pray that for myself, that I practice what I preach. Read your Bible. Live it out. Go out there and proclaim Christ like you used to. And then let the chips fall. Because as you get stronger and you get more emotionally stable, you'll be more powerful and effective in bringing Muslims to Christ. Because now you won't be teetering and tottering because of some emotional traumatic experience, because of some Christians failing to live up to the Lord, because your eyes will be on Jesus. And if I fail, you still will be strong because Jesus can't fail you. He's the anchor of your soul. So there you go. Yes, sir. And I just I just want to thank you, Sam, but I know it's God working through you. It is all credit to God alone that brought me on this path. You have to get that right. It was God alone. God, yes. you know, Romans eleven thirty six. all things are from him, through him, and to him. To him be the glory forever. And Sam... Thank you for the talk earlier today, too, because something I learned from you today, for real, is that I am a fighter. You know, my job is to fight. That's all I do is fight. So now I'm going to be fighting for God. It, it, you know, Christians are not weak. True Christians are tough. You cannot be a weak Christian. It says the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. So all this effeminate stuff that is being proclaimed and stuff, man, that's just going to lead you to hell. You know, don't Amen. be like that. You know, so you got to be a man. You got to step up. You got to fight. You know, sometimes you have to stand up for the truth. Even if it's not popular, you got to do it. You know, you got no choice. The enemy is going to be against you. You might as well fight anyway. Just letting you know, just do it for God's glory. Amen. Don't forget these two passages. I'm going to give you to meditate on tonight. You guys can read it later. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians, Second chapter, Corinthians. chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. And then Ephesians 6, you're going to read 10 to 20. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. 
right? Specifically 12 to 18. But read it. Those two passages are about warfare, that you're called to be the church militant. You're in war, but it's a spiritual war with spiritual weapons that are indestructible. So study what your weaponry is and master it, and you'll be unconquerable in the battlefield against Satan because your God is almighty. Yes, sir. So you, go. you got it. How can they pray for you? Any final words and how can they pray for you? Man, <laughs> that's heavy. Um, you know, I just pray as you feel led. Just pray that I'd be strong for kind of like what you do, Sam. You pray for spiritual protection, physical protection. You know, you just, you just, I just pray that I can be a, a good influence where, I, where, in my, where I'm at in life, you know, with everyone around me. Amen. Amen, brother. And we're here for you. Keep watching. Keep learning. Keep reading. And I thank the Lord that the ministry I'm doing for the glory of Christ has been helping you, especially with the article. So keep growing, brother. And I'm here whenever you need something. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We love you, brother. Lord bless you and preserve you. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Take care, brother. Bless you. Yep.